Hey there fellow creators, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and this week I'm back with another product review. Today we're looking at the Etcher 24 Half Pan Watercolor Set. Stick around. Okay, I already know what you're saying in your head. Etch, what? What did you say? What? How was that spelled? A number of years ago, an artist by the name of Darren Yao, a professional working and living in Australia, created a bag called the Nomad Art Satchel. This thing. This guy ran on Kickstarter, uh, was successfully funded, did a second production run, which is how I got mine, and then the guy shifted a little bit, rebranded under the name Etcher, completely made a new series of these, and started his company to uh, both create this carry range for artists on the go, as well as make a variety of art supplies uh, by artists for, uh, for artists. And uh, one of the things they came up with in the past couple of years has been this 24 pan, half pan set of watercolors. So first off, I want to talk about sort of shipping and design, because this was really important. Uh, first of all, when I ordered the original Nomad, this said it was international shipping coming straight from his production area in Australia. He now has a few subsidiaries around the world. He sells through Amazon and Blick, so a lot of his products are out there, uh, which makes them uh, less shipping and getting them to you a lot easier than it used to be for a lot of his stuff, which is really, which is really great. Shows uh, major growth. Now, the overall design of this stuff, I was really impressed with this. My uh, did a little f unboxing and first uh, impression of this on the uh, that was live on the channel a while ago, but. Uh, so the first thing I noticed is that, uh, well, the box has a great design in and of itself, the, the box that it comes in. Uh, I did find it was a little difficult to find out how it opened. Uh, there wasn't really any indication. I was trying to, like, pull it and rip it apart. I didn't quite rip it apart, but uh, I was a little bit dumb when I realized that the uh, opening uh, top was a little magnetic flip top, which uh, was really fun, but something like, okay, that I... Would have been nice for like a little arrow like open here kind of thing, but uh, eh, not the end of the world Mostly just me being stupid. I was surprised to see that there was an included microfiber cloth, which I suppose would make a good uh, Way to wipe your watercolors and, and brush as you're working, but uh, I'm not gonna waste a good micro microfiber cloth on that uh, Rather use a paper towel personally, but it is a nice uh, way to reuse your uh, towel or something to, to work on the pan itself is solid, um, probably a extra heavy aluminum or maybe a thin steel, I'm actually not really sure. Uh, similar to what you might find out of a, uh, a pan, similar pan set from other companies. Uh, the little cakes themselves were very easy to move around if you felt the need to. You just kind of move the little bendy pan, you can pull it out that way. Uh, all of the pans themselves, or the cakes themselves came with uh, a little seal, a little wrapper on them. Showed you the color as well as what pigment was in them, I thought that was really fantastic. Of course, by the time you take the little sticker off, which at first I thought you had to kind of slice off, but they just peel off super easily. Uh, but they, uh, uh, but having the pigment information there was really nice, so I kind of wish that was on the little cake itself, but I imagine that doesn't make as much sense if you refill it with another color. So you could probably write it on there if you really wanted to. Now where the pigment information was also listed, which I thought was this was really great, is they include a color chart. Uh, now the color chart is just the list of names and the opacity and the pigment, which is all really fantastic information to have regardless. Uh, it, but it was on, there, there was no actual color on the paper, but the paper itself is watercolor paper. And it took me a minute to, I'm like, this is really neat, they put it on watercolor paper. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. This is so you can make your own color chart. And that's a really great touch. And uh, that's one of the first things I did was I opened all those colors up. Uh, and then, you know, and, and they're, they're mostly listed in order. Um, I took, they should have, done it as I was peeling the stickers off, but uh, just had to like look up a, an unopened picture of the, uh, of the pans, and then I got my colors. Uh, and that was really a useful thing too, because a lot of the uh, dried paints themselves don't have the same color they do when they're wet uh, in the pans, so seeing that on the paper was actually really valuable. And it was definitely a handy tool to have as I was working. Speaking of working, I do want to talk a little bit about uh, my general working experience with these and how, I, how they felt and all that kind of stuff, because that's really important too. Uh, the very first thing I noticed with these colors reactivate very, very easily. Now I've had some issues, especially with the tubes that I've had and letting those dry, react reactivating those colors on my palette. These colors, like one drop of water and you're good to go. It's, it's really impressive how quickly that paint just picks up and you're, it just, you can immediately start working, which is something you tend to not see as often. Uh, in especially uh, some certain dried watercolor brands. 
The pigments are extremely bright, vibrant, super strong. Uh, of course, some colors are going to have a higher tint strength than others. Actually, we'll say the purple in particular really jumps out at you. You don't need much of that to go a really long way. As I mentioned before with the color chart, uh, having all of those colors next to each other, especially a lot of the darks, uh, it's really hard to see what colors are what, and uh, it, even after you reactivate them, a lot of times I have to go to the, to the, the mixing uh, plate or uh, just onto a p piece of paper or a paper towel to really see what those colors are. Um, not the best experience, but I feel like that's kind of the same with any watercolors. Is it, the mass tone in, in the dried version is not going to be quite as much as when it, you go onto the paper. I did find that in my tests that I feel like the paints were better for wet on dry techniques than they were wet on wet techniques. Now that could just be my um, being a little out of practice with, with watercolors, doing watercolors for a full piece. Uh, but I, I did find that it, the, the paints applied better to the paper and two different papers actually. I tried uh, initially with a, uh, uh, a Canson 140 pound cold press and that, well that painting just turned out terrible. Uh, so I decided to move to some Archer's uh, uh, 300 pound rough which I did much better with. Uh, but even still the, the wet on wet techniques did not really apply as well as just doing straight wet on dry illustration work. I, I also found, and I kind of mentioned this earlier about trying to figure out what colors were what, I actually kept losing track of what colors were where, um, especially with the way they're broken up. Now I may end up rearranging the colors sometime later, uh, just as a personal preference, but it, it felt a little strange. I'm like, I'm like was this the, this color? Nope, it wasn't that one. And I had to keep going back and forth and testing, like was that that color? Was this, I can't remember what's where. Now that, a lot of that could just be that this is the first time I was using them and I need to get the experience of learning what, where those colors are. But uh, even just sitting and working, I, I thought, I'm like, I shouldn't be struggling this much to figure out where these colors are. And, and that was over the course of like a two hour painting session. I also found that the choice of the 24 colors felt a little overwhelming. I mean, I don't have that many colors in the watercolors I have. So 24 colors, it's like, I, I don't need this, th this many colors for this. I, I mean, I, if you know how to mix your colors, you can make anything with a basic tube, a, uh, set, uh, a set of six. So it seemed a little much, honestly. And overall, because I th I'm so used to tubes, I'm actually thinking that pan sets just aren't for me. This is technically my first ever uh, complete artist style pan set. I have some old Crayolas on the shelf, but uh, generally I'm using uh, my watercolors out of the tube versus, and, well, and while they're still wet, rather than having to reactivate them in a pan. Uh, I think the, the biggest challenge for me was that uh, because the, that area of color is so small and you have to do keep transferring color to palette, color to palette, um, I like to be able to spread my paint out because I'm more used to doing that with my acrylics or oils. Uh, so having to work on such a smaller palette and a smaller scale, well, really good for travel, I imagine, just doesn't fit well with my workflow. So all that said, let's have a look at sort of the pros and cons on e either side of this. First, I was surprised that these paints are actually a really great price. I was a little overwhelmed at first. They run just under $50 US, but uh, I thought, and I thought that was a lot, and then I looked at what other similar 24 half pan sets were, and those are well over $100, and I'm like, wow, that's surprising, actually. So I'm like, these are actually kind of a steal for the price they are. As I mentioned, I think twice already, the e re easy activation and reactivation of the paint is, is like second to none. I've, I've never had a, a watercolor of any quality reactivate that quickly with that little water. One thing I noticed on my initial uh, opening and review of this, there was a little wire ring on the back of the, uh, uh, the case itself. I'm like, what is this for? And then I started to realize when I was just holding it, I'm like, oh, this is a, like a ring for your finger so you can pick it up and hold it like a palette while you're uh, working if you're doing more plain air stuff. And I'm like, wow, that actually makes these incredibly good for travel. And the low profile of the box themselves uh, makes it super easy to fit into pretty much any carry bag you can think of. All that said, I also, again, really am impressed with the overall just design and presentation of, of the, uh, both the box that it came in and the colors and, and, and everything themselves. Uh, they're super easy to use, easy to work with. I mean, most watercolors are going to be really easy to work with, but uh, these were just really impressive. The, the pick up and go uh, ability with these is, is really incredible. On the downside though, well, okay, this first one I think is really just the limits of my own technique and my own uh, experience. Uh, I use watercolors very differently than the way most people use watercolors. 
Uh, so the, the, the pan set, I think, just isn't for me. Uh, but I do find that there is limits to what you can do with them, especially on that, again, that small scale of the, the, the palette and the, and the, the pan itself. Um, I found, like, I wanted to go into the color with a nice big brush, but I just couldn't do that because there isn't enough room to do, to do so for those particular techniques. Next up, the second con. I, again, this is really just my opinion here, but I think 24 colors is too many. Uh, honestly, I, I, I felt like there's, there's too many options. Now, options are good. My studio is full of options of things I can use, but I also know in advance that these are the ones that I know I need, these particular colors. For example, I don't even have 24 watercolors now, and I've been building my watercolor set for years. I have 15 watercolors on my shelf. That's nowhere close. And even if you include the gouache, because gouache is opaque watercolor, it's still only 23. So 24 colors is more colors in watercolor than I have ever had before. And that's, it's still, it's too many. I'm like, I, I don't need all these options. All you need is, even if you're gonna limit yourself, uh, to, to having, I don't know, eight colors. Warm blue, cool blue, you know, the warm cools of all the colors. Uh, black and white, and then maybe like an ochre or a sienna. That's maybe like 10, I think, or eight or 10. That's more than enough for artists of any level. And 24 just is a little overwhelming, and I think that's too many. But, you know, it's, it's neat, that thing, and they all fit in the box, but 24 is too many colors. And the last one is something that bothers me with a lot of sort of designery paint things, specifically spray paint, is that not all of the color names are color names. Some of them, uh, actually a lot of them, have just different color names that don't correspond to the pigment. The two that jump out at me right out of the, out of the gate are uh, Just Yellow, uh, Llama, was it Llama Orange, I think, Simply Red, like, Power black, like these, these aren't these aren't artist color names. They're just there because you wanted to have fun with them. Uh, and again, color chart has all the pigment information on it. And certain colors, there's one in there called brick brown. I know just by experience of using a lot of colors that brick brown is PR uh, 101, the uh, red oxide. But a lot of them, it's just like I don't need the fancy color names. Just give me the pigment information. Which again, why why that little color map was literally right next to me the entire time I was working. So despite my complaints, and honestly I think a lot of those are just me not liking the pan sets. I'm, I'm just way more suited in my studio to using tubes. Uh, these are actually really great paints. I, I'm super impressed with them. I'm very happy to have them in my studio. Just probably not something I'm gonna be using all the time. I imagine I'll pull these out when I'm doing more illustrative stuff. Thing, times I just need a little bit of extra color that I can use with a small brush and just put in some extra little highlights or details, maybe some mixed media projects, but I probably won't be using these uh, for bigger scale watercolor pieces in the near future. As mentioned before, this stuff is premium designed, artist made for artists. That's really great. The ease of use uh, is fantastic and it hands down some of the best I've ever used. I think the overall experience of these can feel really overwhelming, but not for long if you practice with them enough. Uh, Granted, I probably won't be practicing with, with a ton, so it's going to feel overwhelming for, with me for a couple of years, I imagine. But if this is going to be your go-to pan set, uh, I'm pretty sure the pick up and go and ace of use will help uh, quell many issues you have with uh, figuring out where those colors are and everything I, else I complained about. I think that's just an experience thing of using it more versus using it for the first time. And overall, generally, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super impressed with these. Uh, for whether you are new to water, watercolors or you've been doing it for years, uh, these are like seal of approval on top of seal of approval. Uh, if you need a half pan set that's reasonably priced, get these. They're really good. But I'm curious what you guys have to say about this. Uh, you normally say if you've tried these, but these are kind of new to the market and a lot of people probably don't even know these exist. So I'm curious if my review of them has sparked your interest and got you interested in some possibly some new art products out there. As I mentioned before, these products, while are available at major retailers, I highly recommend just ordering them from the company that makes them. You can find that at etcherlab.com, uh, available in the description box below. Not sponsored, just love their stuff, uh, really impressed with it, and uh, yeah, if, if anything in this video sparked your attention, let me know your thoughts and comments. And as always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, uh, Check me out in social links in the description box below, including my official website where you can find and buy my artwork. Uh, 
uh, community Discord down there as well, where you can chat with me outside of the YouTube public forum, uh, as well as get feedback on your work and everything like that. But again, if you enjoyed this, hit the like button, subscribe. I said all that already. Uh, keep on creating, and I will see you guys next time.